everybody, I'm Renocio, and today I'm gonna show you a thing. So for those of you who saw my monster sketchbook remake video thing a while ago, that make any sense? For those of you who saw the video where I remade my monster sketchbook, you'll be familiar with this little boy, giant boy. Inside are contained drawings from anywhere from 2015 through 2018-ish. And today I thought it'd be kind of interesting if I showed you guys what's all inside. There's probably some garbage in here. There's definitely some garbage in here, but it should also be kind of an interesting look back. I'm a big fan of seeing where my drawings have been or any of my artistic, any of my artistic endeavors and where I continue to grow from. So I hope you guys can find some enjoyment out of this as well. So without further ado, let us begin. So for those of you who didn't watch the monster sketchbook video, this is an old sketchbook that was overflowing that I rebound and reset up with a whole new uh, skin. I'm sorry, that with the little stitches is a uh, very Halloweeny. Not my intention. Anyway, this book, like I mentioned, is full of things from. Uh, basically what I started drawing in middle school to a couple of years ago. I've been cutting and pasting images because I used to draw everything on computer paper or on just like loose uh, homework. <laughs> and I would, and it ended up having this big pile of drawings that I really needed to do something with. I don't know, maybe I was allergic to sketchbooks or something. I just seemed to be like completely against the idea. This is so stargy. So what I did is I cut up all of the images that I, well, not all of them, there's still a bunch, but I cut up a bunch of drawings and I pasted them all in here. And so they're not really in any sort of chronological order. They're just kind of all over the place. But anyway, let's dig in. Oh, this boy is starchy. I've got a bunch of drawings like these. It's probably very dim and hard to see, but these were original characters. And I, I don't know, I went on a bender of doing like layouts, like a, like a shonen anime or shonen manga layout. Like it had nothing to do with the characters. It just seemed to be like a cool scene that they could be in. And there was lots of dynamic poses and shortening and, and closer and farther to get. I don't know, it was, I should do that again. <laughs> I remember being insanely proud of this drawing when I first made it, but boy, oh boy, that anatomy. Yes, please ignore the not safe for work content. I I wouldn't say this is the only smut I've ever drawn, but it's certainly some of the few that gets that's ever been shown anywhere. Shout out to my Discord group. What is that? Do it's that food? Some of these papers are made of very thick material, and so they just they don't stick down, no matter what I do. Pages like this are why I think it's really fun to do a sketchbook in this way, even though it is extremely time consuming, would not recommend. Uh, <laughs> having really, really old drawings, this was probably fresh out of 2005, next to much more recent drawings. I think this was probably 2016, 17-ish. That was 2015, 16. These are high school. These are more recent. It gives you a good sampling palette of how far your art has come and how it's changed over time. 
There's drawings like this one where I was kind of experimenting with a different style. Ah, the cannon! <laughs> anyway, like I was saying, there's drawings where I was playing around with different styles. There's some where I was trying to do more realism sort of thing. There was a lot of playing with OCs and then learning how to do different face shapes. And it, it kind of, it's really interesting to me to see all where I've been and where I'm going with art. This drawing here I'm still really fond of. It still holds up really well. I think the one anatomical thing that stands out to me is the fact that everyone's eyes are really far set. But beyond that, this was a bunch of OCs that I made up in middle school, high school sort of thing. And like I mentioned before, I was doing a lot of really interesting posing and scenery and just playing around with the characters. And like, the posing and composition of this one still really holds up. I still really enjoy it. Maybe I gotta go back to like the stuff I was doing at this time to re-inspire myself to try new things, to really kind of like push myself out of my comfort zone. One of the few times I ever drew a machine. It was hard. <laughs> How do you like the blank stare on that one? Sometime in 2017, 18, I started, because before this I'd always done everything in pencil all the time and, you know, very rarely play around with color. But in this one, this year area thing, I started playing around with ballpoint pen and I actually found that my sketches turned out really well. I don't know if it was because I was really inspired at the time, I was really into Steven Universe, or if it was just that like having a new medium or knowing that I'm probably gonna mess up with this, it's fine, was like very freeing, but I had a lot of really good luck with the ballpoint pen. You probably noticed by now there's a lot of pages that have just like full sheets of computer paper stapled in. That's because sometimes I draw on the entire page and I'm like, eh, this is all too cohesive to really separate. So why don't I just leave it as it is? I remember really liking this one at the time too. This was drawn in 08 and I had intentions to color it. I never got around to that. Likewise, this was supposed to be a birthday present for somebody and I just never finished it. Oops. How's this one for flashbacks? This one is fresh out of 2005. Earliest learning to draw what are shapes, what are people's faces, what is going on with this mouth? You gotta start somewhere. I remember these being characters I made up in a dream. It was something about running around town as this Bones character who had, it was very Q-Bone-esque, kind of just had a skull on their head and was running around. And then there's this really tall spooky guy and this kid with one arm missing. I don't remember what we were doing, but like, it stuck with me. Every once in a while there'll be a character, like this one here um, also came out of a dream. I just had this really elaborate like scenario that happened and I was like, this character, like the image of the character stuck in my brain. So I drew it out and now they're stuck with me forever. Every once in a while I'll try to draw some animals, but um, not my strong suit. Oh no, oh no, it's too strong. 
Oh, I'm sorry about that one. This one is extremely funny to me because it was a whole bunch of friends from online and I drew my partner in here and B does not look anything like I drew. <laughs> Whoops. This one was not drawn by me. This was a friend. I, I had this sketchbook when I was in high school, like grade 9, 10, so that was somebody else. I let them have a page. I don't tend to do that a lot with sketchbooks. I kind of like to keep everything cohesive nowadays and be like, no, this is all my own art. So even when I'm playing around with different styles, you still know that it's me who was in there. Whoa. This is the main reason I don't like playing with alcohol markers so much. They bleed through the other page and then I'm just hyper aware of the color there. Unfolding! <laughs> There's a uh, massage homework. This one probably still is my finest work. Seeing stuff like this makes me think, well, at least my ink work has improved. <laughs> I didn't do a lot of ink work before, so it's, it's nice to see that there was some impro- Why are your eyes so wide set? This was that cartoony style I mentioned that I went on a bender for. It's so cute. Not far off of what I was doing anyway, but like, something about it is different and fun. Your head is super wide though. This was the sole time I've ever drawn Batman, and it's probably my best Batman ever. It's weird how periods of art sort of flux. When I was first starting art, I was doing a lot of playing around with inking and with coloring and that. And then when I got into Steven Universe, uh, like between 2016 and 2018, I started messing around again. So I was doing more dynamic poses. I started playing with a ballpoint pen. And then I started uh, using colored pencils to try to do more semi-realism sort of things, play around with shading and stuff, which I'd never really done. So definitely a learning curve thing. This was also something drawn by somebody else. Actually, the same person that did the other drawing back there. We shared a lot. I had someone tell me in a, a tag or a comment once on Tumblr that this amethyst looked like, what was her name, Dijonet from Proud Family? It's still the funniest thing anyone's ever posted on, on one of my drawings, and uh, they're absolutely correct.
Stuff like this is incredibly funny to me because when I was a kid, I mean, up until I was basically 19, 20 years old, I had never even thought about queerness as a thing. Like I just had, I was the ultimate sheltered child. I just, it never occurred to me that was a thing. So here I am, like nowadays everybody's shipping Zuko and Sokka, rewatching Avatar and everyone's on board with it. But at the time there weren't a lot of queer ships and the ones that were, I was kind of like, ah, and I didn't even realize that was a thing. And then here my gay ass is like, but what if these two characters? And like, I never drew them kissing or anything. I was just like, mm, yes though. Like you dumb queer bastard. I really ought to try to draw more monsters, dragons, animals. I remember designing these costumes when I was very young and dreaming about going to San Diego Comic-Con back when Avatar was still running and very big. And obviously that never happened, but I did end up actually making a badger mole. Not a costume, but like a plush toy that's the same size as my Alpha. I think this one was drawn by somebody else. Honestly, couldn't tell you. Man, those pen doodles are really fun though. I gotta go back to that. Just ballpoint pen for days. That's from the Homeworld T-Series, which was a set of fanfic that I wrote for Ruby and Sapphire from Steven Universe. It was like an origin story, big meta something or other. Completely non-canonical at this point, like not even close. But it was fun while it lasted and it kind of exploded. So that was a thing. This was an actual conversation I had with my sister one day where <laughs> somebody asked, is Calgary in Alberta? <laughs> my sister said, I thought Calgary was in America. We're not that dumb, I promise. Every once in a while I'll do like a cool monster design and then I'm like, damn, why don't I draw more of these things? And then I remember because I can't replicate them. <laughs> I draw them once and then it's like, well, that's the only time you'll ever exist. These characters, they're OCs as well. This was another thing that at the time I didn't think anything about, but in retrospect is an incredibly funny to me. Whereas I was drawing these three as like a poly trio and this character in particular, I was referring to, I had a lot of pages where I was talking about their gender, about feeling more male or more female or being ribbed about like, oh, you're acting or looking girly and then being like, ah, I don't know about this. And I didn't realize that like gender divergence was a thing, that there was anything beyond the binary. Like clearly I'd never applied it to myself, but just in general, I didn't realize it was a thing. And yet here I was, creating a non-binary character without realizing that's what I was doing. I mean, everybody jokes about how queer kids bond together in when they're younger, before they even know they're queer. And then you grow up and you realize that everyone you know is queer. This was like that, but I drew it. This 
this drawing still holds up really well. For I did it all in ballpoint pen and I, or ballpoint no, mechanical pencil. That's the thing. And like Ang's face is a little derpy, but overall the composition of it still holds up and the shading's not bad. Especially for somebody who didn't normally do that sort of thing. There was this whole thing with Toph and Ang and this theory about Ko the face sealer, and it was a big deal when I was into this ship and the Avatar was a big thing. Uh, I think I, <laughs> I think I personally probably made like 80% of the art about it. Um, I'm a one man army. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh, oh, oh god. Oh, well, there's a drawing under there. Just, um... I remember seeing somebody at a convention who was doing very dynamic inking, and I decided I wanted to try that. So, here's where I began my inking journey. I love the pages where I run into the same character, but drawn many years apart. This was the first time I drew this guy, and I don't know if there's a date on it. Probably not, but probably like 2006, maybe seven. And then this one I think was 20, I thought it was 2008. So like, maybe a couple years difference between these two, same character, big improvement. How do you like that comic layout? It's not confusing at all. So y'all remember that dragon dance from the one episode of Avatar The Last Airbender? Yeah, your boy went through and figured out how exactly it would work in real life. Like I went through screenshot by screenshot and plotted out how the dance should go. So I did actually draw that out. That does exist. I used to be able to do it. You know, when I was like, cool in middle school. Yeah, about that. This was a finger painting that we had to do in art class in like grade 12. And it doesn't look anything like me, but it sure kind of does look like Kina Granis. This was again, that same character and it, written in the back is three and a half women. Like I just didn't know at the time, I didn't understand what gender identity was and like how somebody could be both or neither or be a girl, but not quite. Like, I just didn't have the words to articulate it at the time. And I'm like, it's okay, baby gay. You'll, you'll figure it out.
this is the other half of the Dragon Dance. Uh, when I took this book apart and reorganized it, I don't remember why, but I put the the signatures back in in a random order. So everything's kind of scrambled from where it was originally. So that's the end of it guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you did, please let me know with a like or a comment or whatever. And if you'd like to hang out and see more of this kind of stuff in the future, feel free to stabby scrooby and I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye! Those of you who watch my monster sketchbook busy, I'm sorry if you guys can hear that drilling noise. I can't do anything about it. They've been in construction in my building for months now and I've been waiting for a good day to do this and there just there just isn't one. They're just constantly doing the drilling. So that's the end of it. Oh god I just shook the whole table. Those of you who watched my monster sketchbook video recently have seen this I just hit myself in the face with that. Drilling intensifies. Why are they like this? Please, please, please. Ten minutes ago this was not happening.